Hello, Star Wars Unboxing fans, and a happy holiday season to all of you. I'm your host, Darth Tuba. Welcome to Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. And I'm here because I have a box. But it's not one box. Uh-uh. This is Entertainment Earth. Entertainment Earth never sends one box. Uh-uh. They sent about six boxes or seven boxes. And as I might have mentioned in, in a previous episode, I just don't want to unbox seven or eight boxes. I'm, I'm out of time. We have a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the Darth Tuba household. Uh, some things related to the channel, some things completely, most things not related, just a day job and the holidays and things like that. So I decided to compress and present to you many things that have come in the mail. And if you're a collector like me, I'm sure you've seen many of these come in the mail because they've just been kind of coming fast and furious these past like two months, which is the way it works nowadays in collecting in 2023 going into 2024. So let's see what, I, so what I've taken done is I've taken all the different individual figures that I've received. And I've taken them out of their little boxes and I've put them in one big box. By the way, this big box contained one figure. But you'll see how many can actually fit in here. Although I will say there's no packing in here, so no packing materials. So they would get, definitely get damaged. Now, I do have one little caveat. I was bringing a box downstairs and I dropped it and it went down the stairs. It rolled down. Didn't, nothing came out. And there's not a lot of denting. So we'll see if I damaged anything. Hopefully not. But we shall see. All right. Hey, you know, it's 100% real here in uh, Darth Tuba land. Okay. Well, we do have one bent figure, but however, this was already bent. So this wasn't on, this wasn't on my, this wasn't my fault. We have now VC-303 from The Mandalorian, the hero of the rebellion, R5-D4. Um, I have to say, I am just kind of gently bending the figure back a little bit here. I have to say, I love that they brought R5-D4 back. Uh, if anybody's read any of the tales, the different tales that have gone, you know, the different expanded universe stories, okay, um, you'll know that R5-D4 um, kind of, one of the, the, one, the way one of the stories goes is that R5-D4 was um, actually a droid that purposefully sab sabotaged himself and had his motivator blow up so that R2 would be able to complete his mission. Like R2 was talking to him and he helped him out. So in a way, we owe all of the existence of the Rebellion to this little guy right here. And to have him kind of show up and be with Mandalorian, I think is really cool. And on top of that, it tells a whole other story about his personality in the sense that he seems like a little bit of a fraidy cat. So now you think, well, when he, when he gladly let R2 go along with 3PO, uh, he probably just didn't want to get involved. So, you know, he's a hero, quote unquote, but he's also just kind of a reluctant hero because all he wanted to do was not go into danger. But VC-303, really cool. So there it is. Uh, now we go, uh, now we have a nice Return of the Jedi, VC-106. I am going to put uh, a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll take a photo and put it here of this figure with the recent figures. I got to tell you, I'm getting ready to pull away from getting them, especially for alien figures. Um, but I, cause I haven't been like all that impressed with the alien resculpts. I understand human and human face resculpt cause you're using like the computer scanning technology. I get that. But when it comes to these, yes, there is detail. It's definitely better, but you know, I am, it's already a lot of figures here. So I don't know, but I love nine numb. Okay. I love the little Celestrian, uh, he did not die in uh, Rise of Skywalker. We did not see him die. We saw they cut the scene out, so he did not die. So he can come back at any given time in Lucasfilm. You better bring him back. All right, we have Luke Skywalker, Jedi Academy from the Book of Boba Fett, which is, of course, the weird Mandalorian episode that was wedged into the Book of Boba Fett. But I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that at all, people. Okay, this is the Valoni verse now. We're just living in it. Let it happen. Just let it happen. Okay? Again, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it on my channel. I'll say it every day. And I'm going to die on this hill. Before Disney bought Lucasfilm, we had Star Wars Angry Birds. We had Star Wars M&Ms. We had Star Wars Family Guy and Robot Chicken. Nothing against any of them. They were great. But they weren't what we really wanted. Okay, we have stories now. We have characters. We have new characters. We're telling stories with old characters. They may not be the stories you want to hear, some of you, and I get that. Okay, but we have them. 
and now it's it, it engages new viewers and engages young people and engages new generations of fans and we can still i love when they bring luke back now i know the whole de-aging and the ai thing and look if they i think lucasfilm properly has been doing this they reached out to the when they when they did the peter cushing thing they reached out to the estate the estate gave permission when they did this thing they brought mark hamill back as part of the developmental team to create this character i know that they used a lot of other things unrelated to mark hamill's performance but they brought him in and i'm sure he was compensated so for that if they long as they take that route i'm okay with it okay as long as they, the the actor has given permission and is fairly compensated that's my view on it if i were an actor and i ended up playing an iconic role that and now they want to tell stories, continue to tell stories with that role. It's made no different than animation, okay? I mean, why is that any different? Somebody voiced the role of Batman forever and ever and ever, or Superman forever and ever and ever. Well, you know, eventually they have to move on or they can't do it anymore, so someone else takes over the voice. You know, that's kind of where I am with that, so. I love the gi, okay? Um, similar to the Return of the Jedi gi, I'm not a big fan of the cloth goods being below the waist. It seems a little odd but hmm, you know i get you know i get hasbro's decision to do that so a lot of figures here okay who else we got we have grand admiral thrawn from star wars rebels rebels not ahsoka rebels so he's of course they make him look a look you know they they give him a look which is, i'd be very curious to see i don't know if he's here but i'd be very curious to see if there is a um, so I want to do a side by side when they when they release the Ahsoka Grand Animal Thrawn and see. I mean, obviously his uniform was a little bit more tattered. There was a little bit difference there. He's a little older, so we'll see what we have with that. This is VC two ninety six. I'm gonna have to go through my my VC figures and reorder them because I keep them in order, but then we keep getting new ones, so I have to kind of consolidate. VC two ninety five Morgan Elsbeth. I love this character. I loved that they gave her an arc, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end. I hope they don't bring her back. I think she served her purpose. I love the actress who plays her, who has a really good attitude about the whole thing. And, um, you know, a little connection to Bruce Lee. So that was really cool swordplay and martial art uh, inspiration. Great figure. Again, this one has, I like this cloth good going all the way down. It's, I think it's the skirt, the shorty skirt that um, always throws me a little bit. But the long skirt makes perfect sense. So, good job with that. Now we're going back to Obi-Wan Kenobi, Grand Inquisitor. It's like an itch. You can't help it. I am loving that we have all of this awesome Star Wars content now. Think about this. Think about it. We have. What have we gone through? Mandalorian. Three seasons. Andor. Season one and another season coming. Obi-Wan. Kenobi. I mean, come on. Ahsoka. I mean, Book of Boba Fett. Five separate, completely different areas, unrelated to each other, but in some cases, somewhat related to each other. I am so thrilled for this, okay? I am, I, I can't wait to see what comes next, all right? And I, but I'll tell you, I'm glad they're not throwing two or three or four on top of us at once, because then you have the Arrowverse, and I was into the Arrowverse. I liked Legend of Tomorrow. I liked arrow i liked flash i liked supergirl i liked uh i guess those are the four i watched and then they kept adding more and they had more and they had more characters and it became and then people would die but then multiverse people would come back and you didn't know who was from where i mean i liked how they did it but then it had been it got too big and honestly i think marvel is running into this issue i still like the marvel movies that have come out but with all the movies that come out with all of the I think there's saturation, and I think we're running into an issue there. So I think if Star Wars wants to pull back and pull a pull a George Lucas and throw movies movies out or even streaming shows out every two or three years, I'm good with that. I'm good. You get a whole new generation of fans too. Okay, speaking of Ahsoka, General Hera Syndulla. Uh, this is VC 300. She made. I like the purple. She made uh, on the back too. She made the VC 300 mark. Some people might have a problem with that because, I don't know, some people didn't like Hera. I thought Hera was great. I thought that she was a little bit, it wasn't her story, so she did the proper thing, which was stay in the background. 
there were a few moments which I appreciated, but it wasn't her story. And um, I love the actress who plays her, but I'm used to the actress who plays her being a kid. You know, I remember seeing Sky High, and I forget the name of the actress, I'm sorry. But Sky High and Live Free and Die Hard, one of the Die Hard movies, and she played the daughter of John McClane, and she played the villain in Sky High, and it was just, she was a kid. You know, she was like a, a, an, an, a, an older kid, like a 17, 18 year old, but and a, then a young college kid in the Die Hard movie. And now she's like a mom, you know, it's, it's, I know, time goes on, but it's just weird. Okay, and then we have one more here. Uh, this is the, from the Obi-Wan Kenobi, this is the two-pack. Um, this is the showdown. Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Kenobi showdown and Darth Vader duels end. Um... I am going to do a partial, I'm going to try to do a partial unboxing if I can. Uh, looks like, yes. All right. I don't want to lose the box. I just want to see the figures. So I'm going to do a little slice there. Come on, guys. There we go. Very gently. So here is Obi-Wan Showdown, VC290. Okay. Um, yeah, I love this. I love that they expanded on this. I, I don't care what anybody else says. And then, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll re-box these up when I'm done. But then you have Darth Vader Duel's End from, from Obi-Wan. This is VC291. So cool. With the, with the open mask. You did not kill Anakin. I did. Just so cool. Expanding on stories. Telling other areas. I mean, I think in the old days we used to have this in the form of comic books. Or maybe novels. And some people loved them and ate them up and, and got more into them than even, than even the movies. Right? But now with streaming... And with more opportunities for things and to be able in, 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 you know, with the cost of things coming down, special effects, and you can tell more intimate stories, and that's really great. All right, last but not least, again, um, this is probably one, I, I know in the last episode I said the, the um, Indiana Jones figures that were six inch were among the last I bought. Well, actually, this was purchased before that, and that is the Emperor's Royal Guard. Um, just always had an affinity for the Emperor's Royal Guard. Um, it is very much in the same vein as the original, the retro line, the meaning the, I'm sorry, the real retro line from the 80s. And I always loved that figure. There was always a mystery to it. I did love, although I will say, I did chuckle when Yoda walks in on Revenge of the Sith to the to Palpatine's, Emperor Palpatine's office, and the two of the, the two guards are like, you finally see them. They were like evolving in throughout the prequels. Then you finally see them, and they just get their stabs down towards Yoda, and he just goes, and they both go up against the wall. Like, you just took them out. Um, there, are, there are a lot of great Return of the Jedi figures. This is the only one, or I think I got Lando as well. Um, the Skiff Guard Lando. There's only a few that I've picked up. Um, but, you know, I did, I, did like, I did like the look of this figure. I like that it's, again, in the card art. So, excited about that. All right. So, that. Whew. 13 minutes of, of probably saved about, you know, half the time. Or I probably saved half the time to uh, to get all these. Let's see if I can get most of them like lined up here because they're all carded. Um, and of course, I'm not gonna unbox them. I mean, of course, I'm not gonna unbox them. I mean, why would I unbox them? They're gonna go up on my shelf. That's all right. Um, oh my goodness! Look at all these! Holy cow! Um, so as you can see, quite a few of the vintage collection figures. Okay, man, I'm definitely going to have to find some time to do some reorganization up in my rafters here because they're all out of order now. Like, I mean, my, the first, like, 150 to 200 are fine, but then it goes off into craziness. So I'll have to find some new ways to, new ways to motivate them. No, new ways to display them. So 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. Check me out on all my other content on YouTube. Check out me out on Instagram and X. Um, also, check out our Darth Tuba Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook if you want to leave comments. You can always email me, darthtuba77 at gmail.com if you have any questions specifically or leave a comment. I do appreciate them. I read every one and I, supply, and I reply to them as soon as I can. Uh, also, check out all the other content on Red 5. There's some great Star Wars content and I think some other content as well. Thank you, Red 5, for always um, promoting the channel. Thank you so much, folks. Until next time, may the Force and the toys be with you. And again, happy holidays, happy life day.